Keeping backyard chickens means I make a lot of scrambled eggs. There's been a lot of trial and error over the years, but I have the perfect system to make non-stick scrambled eggs, even on stainless steel. And I add one kind of weird ingredient that I think makes all of the difference. So I'm gonna walk you through each step and show you how even with stainless steel, we make non-stick eggs every single time and what I think makes them taste the best too. So first let's start off with just the pan. This is super important. I will link the pans that I use. I'm not saying they're the only ones that work, but they're the only ones that work every time for me. Having good stainless steel pans is absolutely important. I can use the same method on my other stainless steel pans and it won't work the same. So I link this exact pan and pan set for you. So many people have wisely stopped using Teflon by now. We also used to use nonstick pans, it's fine. We graduated and these are so much better. So it's not sponsored or anything. I actually am that obsessed with these pans. I actually do prefer them over my all clad pan. These, I believe they're called multi-clad, but they just seem to have a thicker wall and they just cook a lot better in my opinion. Next, we're getting our fresh backyard chicken eggs and I'm using two bowls. The reason I'm using two bowls is because I'm gonna use one bowl for keeping the eggs that I have already cracked and that are good, and then I'm using the other bowl just for cracking one egg at a time. It seems a little silly to do with just two eggs, but I always have one bowl that I crack one egg in and then dump it in with the other eggs once I know that it's good. Keeping chickens and roosters, we sometimes get kind of yucky, not so edible eggs. So I always crack one at a time and then add it to the other bowl. Again, today I'm only using two eggs, but it really makes a difference when you are making three, four, five, six, or a dozen eggs at a time. Another pro tip, use a battery powered pepper grinder. It makes my life so much easier and I have fresh cracked pepper every time. Now I'm just giving it a little scramble and of course we need some kind of oil. You'll notice I'm not adding anything to the eggs this time. I used to add milk or sometimes water. I know they say something's supposed to happen with the steam, making the eggs more fluffy or something. But when I stopped adding it, I actually just ended up liking them better. My favorite oil to use with scrambled eggs is actually coconut oil. I've used butter, I've used olive oil, I've used bacon grease. Coconut oil is my favorite. I just feel like it makes the eggs really, really light and fluffy and it gives a tiny bit of sweetness, which I know it sounds weird, but don't knock it till you try it. I'm guessing people will probably either love it or hate it because it does give a different taste to the scrambled eggs, but I use it every day now because I can't find anything else I like better and it just makes eggs feel lighter and more refreshing to me. Next, I am going to preheat the pan just slightly. This is really important for making non-stick out of stainless steel. It just takes a little practice sometimes. Don't give up if you don't get it perfect the first time, but I like to preheat it on roughly level six with an induction cooktop. And with induction, it's super fast. So it's ready in about 10 seconds or less usually, but that preheat step is really important when adding the oil. I know people are gonna say, well, you're adding oil, of course it's not gonna stick. Uh, be my guest, try this without preheating it and see how well it works for you if you add the eggs in before the oil is hot. That's why people think stainless steel pans stick. If you don't do this right, it will stick. So I just make sure to coat the sides really well also because the eggs are gonna brush up against the sides. So if anything sticks, that's usually where I get the sticking. So I make sure to get nice hot oil on the bottom and on the sides before I add my eggs. As you can see, things start to bubble up pretty quickly. So I do wanna keep the eggs moving so I don't dry out one particular spot or anything. I believe the general consensus is the lower your temperature, the slower you cook your eggs, the softer, more moist they will be. So it all depends on how you like your eggs, but also it depends on how much stickage you're willing to tolerate. I like my eggs kind of somewhere in between. I don't like them super soft and soggy. I know some people call them creamy, I call it soggy. So I like some moisture to my eggs, but people remember there's no reason to be offended by how other people like their eggs. So you are more than welcome to cook your eggs the way you like to, and this is just how I like to do mine.
As you can see, even while I was stirring it around, there is no sticking to the pan. Everything slid around really nicely. That's just because of one, the kind of oil I used, two, the amount of oil I used, three, the temperature of the pan, and four, the other aspect is kind of the ratio of the number of eggs to the pan I have found. If you have too many eggs, in a pan that is not big enough for them, they will start sticking also. So I know it sounds like a lot to think about. It just takes practice. You don't have to get everything perfect every time. These are just some co components to consider if your eggs are sticking or not turning out the way you want them to. Maybe some areas that you might wanna mix it up. Once again, you can see they slide out really easy. We're not wasting any eggs that are stuck on the pan. That kind of thing drives me crazy when I know our chickens work so hard to make them for us. So we really don't like to waste them. This is kind of the texture at the end, the way I cooked them. These are maybe a little more dry than I typically cook them because I'm trying to film and cook at the same time going back and forth. It's hard to stay on top of it, but I, I do love the induction cooktop. It cooks really quickly and really evenly, but it does mean I have to stay right on top of whatever I'm cooking because it can progress really quickly if I'm not making sure to monitor it. So to recap, the most important things that I consider when making scrambled eggs are number one, having the correct pan. We like to use stainless steel. Personally, I'm just not a fan of the synthetic stuff that they put together that they say is safe for a number of years and then say is not safe later on. So stainless steel or cast iron are usually what we prefer. Number two, having the correct oil and the right amount of oil. And number three, preheating the pan before adding the eggs. So temperature of the eggs, temperature of the oil, it's all something to consider. Again, please don't feel overwhelmed. This is because I have made eggs and messed up eggs so many times. So just kind of thoughts that I've put together and things that I've noticed over the years. Side note, this method I have found does work for sunny side up eggs. I just cover the top and cook them by steam that way. I cannot say that I have tried this technique with eggs over easy and obviously poached and soft boiled and boiled, we're probably talking boiling water. So I don't think it applies there, but for the ones I've tried, it does tend to work pretty well. So if you're like us and you are super grateful for your hardworking backyard chickens, or if you're just super grateful for the chickens that lay your eggs wherever you are, I hope this is a little bit helpful for finding a way to cook them without wasting eggs, getting burned on the pan, and creating a huge cleanup headache. So I would love to hear what works for you if you like making scrambled eggs or other types of eggs. What do you do that results in healthy eggs that don't stick to the pan and don't require a ton of cleanup? Please leave a comment below and don't forget to check out the resources in the description if you want to see the notes for the things that I mentioned. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.